The Majestic 12 documents have become a part of the UFO mythos. They allege that there was a group of 12 men brought together in 1947 to manage the government's investigation of UFOs and maintain secrecy. But where did these documents come from? The answer to that question is usually oversimplified. The true history of their release is a complicated story which has never been told clearly and objectively. After months of research, we are bringing you that story. In order to tell the MJ-12 story, we have to tell you the story of a man named Paul Benowitz and his dealings with the U.S. Air Force in the 1980s. It's a sad story full of deceit and hoaxed government documents. In order to get the U.S. Air Force's version of the story, I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request. I received three files that seemingly tell the entire story of Benowitz's dealings with the Air Force. However, as we will learn later, there is much more to the story. Paul Benowitz was a scientist with contracts with the Air Force. He owned a humidity instrument manufacturing company called Thunder Scientific in Albuquerque, New Mexico. His home and his laboratory were located adjacent to Kirtland Air Force Base. According to the U.S. Air Force documents I received, Paul Benowitz approached Commander Ernest Edwards at Kirtland in late 1980, claiming he had evidence of threats against the base. He said he had taken photographs of UFOs over the Manzano weapons storage area. Threats such as these were taken serious, as this area did research and housed many nuclear weapons. On October 26, 1980, Kirtland sent two men to investigate, Jerry Miller, a scientific advisor for the Air Force, and Air Force Office of Special Investigations Special Agent Richard Doty. They reported that they looked at photographs and 2,600 feet of 8mm film of UFOs over the base. Benowitz also said he had recorded electrical magnetism being emitted from the Manzano area using electronic surveillance equipment he had pointed at the base. Benowitz believed the UFOs were producing electromagnetic pulses. Miller concluded after looking at the material that he could not determine for sure what Benowitz had filmed, but he did not believe it posed a threat to the base. As for the electromagnetic pulses, he informed the Foreign Technology Department, who intended to inspect Benowitz's material. In the end, it was concluded that the Air Force would not conduct any further investigation. Despite the Air Force deciding not to investigate, Benowitz apparently convinced people at the base to take a closer look at his material. The second Air Force document says a meeting took place on November 10, 1980 between Benowitz and several officers and scientists from the base. In the meeting, Benowitz presented his evidence of UFO activity and told the group he was in contact with the aliens that were flying the ships. At the end of the presentation, he told the group he wanted to obtain a grant from the Air Force to continue his investigation of the aliens. The document notes that one of the scientists would help him fill out the proper documents to submit his request. Tom Dooley, a member of the MUFON Board of Directors who had worked for the NSA, says he spoke to one of the Air Force officers who was present at the meeting. So they were afraid that he might be, might be getting into things that really we didn't want him going out and talking about. So they allowed him an audience with um, higher ups uh, in the various commands that are there on Kirtland Air Force Base and they brought the intelligence people in and that included Tom Shea which was at the time an intelligence officer on the base and Tom's description of what went on there <clears throat> once they introduced uh, Benowitz and he began to talk he began to get into things that that as the various people who were there uh, once they determined that they had no interest in this they'd leave the room and basically what happened is that Benowitz was talking about these signals coming from aliens somewhere in space and, and, and to them, the people who were there and worried about what he was seeing and saying, um, they basically just uh, eventually all got up and walked away. And, and in the end, they just thanked him for his time and then he went on about his business. 
The Air Force document goes on to say that OSI agent Doty had received a call from New Mexico Senator Harrison Schmidt on the 26th of November. Schmidt asked what role the Air Force Office of Special Investigations were playing in the investigation of the UFOs reported by Benowitz. Doty advised him that there was no investigation. Schmidt said he would contact the Secretary of the Air Force to determine who should investigate the matter. The Air Force document goes on to say that OSI agent Doty had received a call from New Mexico Senator Harrison Schmidt on the 26th of November. Schmidt was a retired astronaut who went into space on the Apollo 17 mission. According to FBI documents, Schmidt had been an active advocate for investigations into the mysterious animal mutilations that had swept the Southwest in the late 70s. Schmidt organized a conference with law enforcement on the matter in 1979. This is where Schmidt and Benowitz first met, and Benowitz began updating Schmidt on his alien investigations. This helps explain Schmidt's calls to the Air Force. According to the files, the Air Force had no other interaction with Benowitz on the matter. However, the third Air Force file documents a visit by another New Mexico senator. This time it was Senator Pete Domenici. On July 30, 1981, he visited Kirtland Air Force's Inspector General and asked to speak to Agent Doty. They met and apparently Domenici then went directly to meet with Benowitz. The document says that Domenici's aide was asked why the senator wanted to speak with Doty. They were told that Domenici wanted to know if the Air Force had investigated Benowitz's UFO sightings. Domenici's aide was told that no formal investigation had been conducted. According to the Air Force, this is the extent of their involvement with Benowitz and his UFO claims. However, Benowitz and Doty have a different story. Benowitz says that a clandestine group was investigating his case and that he had continued contact with extraterrestrials. However, Doty's claims may be even more revealing. Many people have written about Doty and his claims regarding the matter and other alleged UFO incidents. Often his story changes and when pinned down on specific points, he has said the interviewer got it wrong. So for this investigation, I refer to Doty's own words from a 2005 appearance on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. According to Doty, he was involved with an elaborate disinformation campaign against Benowitz and the whole UFO community. Doty says that Benowitz was actually recording secret projects that were taking place at Kirtland Air Force Base and in order to keep people, including the Soviets, from taking him seriously, Doty perpetuated Benowitz's belief that he was dealing with extraterrestrials. Doty flew Benowitz over Archuleta Mesa near the New Mexican town of Dulce to convince him that there was an alien base there. One of the other methods Doty employed was to create fake government documents. Doty was secretly aided by one of the luminaries of UFO research at the time, Bill Moore. Doty wrote, Moore was used to provide disinformation to ufologists. Moore confessed his role in the disinformation scheme at a mutual UFO network conference in 1989. The UFO research community was so upset by his admission that Moore left UFO research altogether. Prior to the disinformation fiasco, Moore's claim to fame in ufology was being one of the authors, along with Charles Berlitz, of the first book on the alleged Roswell UFO crash. The book was published in 1980. Moore worked with Stanton Friedman to interview witnesses, and although he was not credited as an author, Friedman was the driving force behind the Roswell research. Before Moore's book, the Roswell incident was unknown. Now, it has become a household name. According to Moore, he was recruited to work with Doty by a high-level intelligence official that he codenamed Falcon. Doty says Falcon worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency. However, it has never been definitively confirmed that Falcon even exists, and many people believe him to be made up. 
Doty said other UFO researchers had met Falcon, but those researchers have said those claims are false. Doty and Moore often gave bird code names to people they worked with. Their group of code names has become known as the Aviary. Moore says the first hoax document he was given to give Benowitz was a document called the Aquarius Memo. Moore says he was given the document in March 1981, but was hesitant to give Benowitz knowingly false information. He says he waited until that summer to give Benowitz the document, and when he did, he warned Benowitz it may not be real. The memo was dated November 1980, and it alleged that the Air Force had secretly investigated Benowitz's photographs as part of a project called Aquarius. The memo says the project was classified top secret with no dissemination outside of official intelligence channels with restricted access to MJ-12. This was the first reference to the alleged secret organization, and it's in a document that both Doty and Moore have claimed was fabricated. The documents went on to claim NASA is monitoring the case and that Air Force OSI is gathering evidence and forwarding it to NASA. The timing of this document is important because of Senator Dominici's visit to Kirtland about Benowitz's case. Although the Air Force documents I received say that Doty told Benowitz his case was not being investigated, this hoax document would lead him to believe otherwise. This could be why Dominici wanted to talk to Doty, and although Doty was aware Benowitz had received this hoax document, according to the Air Force document on Dominici's visit, Doty still told Dominici that no investigation had been conducted. According to Doty, he was under orders to send out this disinformation, which meant he had lied to two senators about the true nature of the Air Force's dealings with Benowitz. I mean, I had a job to do, and I did my job. I mean, it, just like you served in the Air Force. I know you did, Art. That's right. You had a job in the Air Force. You did your job in the Air Force. That's right. I had a job in the Air Force. I did my job. I followed orders. Everything we did was following orders. They, they, we would... Uh, perhaps so, but my orders never included orders to, uh, never, to, to lie to people. Although this is the first mention of MJ-12, this is not the end of the story. The next document that was part of Doty's disinformation scheme was a collection of notes that was allegedly used to brief President Carter on UFOs. Moore says he first saw this document in March of 1983. He says he was told he would receive instructions on how to view the documents. This led him on a cloak and dagger trip across the country. It ended up in a hotel in upstate New York where he was met by a man who told him he could view the documents for 19 minutes. Moore says he took notes and pictures and when the 19 minutes were up, the man collected the documents and left. Moore never saw him again. The Carter document was labeled Top Secret Oricon, with the subject listed as Project Aquarius. It alleges that Carter's briefing took place on June 14, 1977 at the White House. It begins with a pilot sighting in Washington that made waves in the press. Then it summarized UFO crashes in the southwestern United States and alleged there were two craft that crashed in Roswell. It says the bodies and craft were sent to Los Alamos with some materials sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, home of Blue Book, the Air Force's official investigation into UFOs. The document claims an extraterrestrial being survived a crash in 1949 and called itself EBE, which stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. It also says that ETs have been visiting Earth for 5,000 years and that the ETs planted a human on Earth about 2,000 years ago. Many assume this refers to Jesus. The document says MJ-12 manages the ET situation and that they are planning a slow release of this information. It also lists other projects related to UFOs and extraterrestrials including the names Bando, Sigma, Snowbird, and Pounce. Although Moore did not mention Doty having anything to do with the Carter document, 
Doty did show the same or a very similar document to UFO and cattle mutilation researcher Linda Moulton Howe. Howe documents the incident in her book An Alien Harvest and has also talked to us about it in depth on Open Minds UFO Radio. She says she was invited by Doty to visit him at Kirtland Air Force Base in April of 1983. She says the visit started off strange. Doty did not pick her up from the airport. After some time, she was able to get in touch with one of his colleagues, Jerry Miller, the same gentleman who apparently accompanied Doty to Benowitz's house. She says when she reached the base, Doty seemed nervous. When they began talking about UFOs, he told her that a famous UFO sighting in New Mexico seen by police officer Lonnie Zamora was a mistake. It was supposed to have been at Holloman Air Force Base to meet government officials on April 24, 1964. According to Doty, the problem was corrected and the government met with the aliens at Holloman the following day. Doty then showed her what she believes is a Carter briefing, but did not allow her to take notes. She says she remembers much of what the document said. There are slight differences from what Moore saw. For instance, it states that a UFO crash in Roswell in 1949 resulted in the live alien, and that the government called it an EBE. It stated that the alien was taken to Los Alamos National Laboratories. It said the EBEs came from a binary star system 55 light years away and that they had been here for 25,000 years. It also mentioned the EBE created 2,000 years ago and said it was here to teach nonviolence and love. When Howe asked why she was being shown the material and not the New York Times or the Washington Post, Doty said it was because they were troublemakers. Although Doty denied ever talking about UFOs with Linda Howe to researcher Phil Class, on Coast to Coast AM, Doty admitted that she was part of the disinformation project and that he had met with her in Kirtland and shown her information pertaining to UFOs. In his infamous MUFON lecture in 1989, Moore told the audience that he began working with TV producer Jamie Shandera in 1982. Moore says he also started sharing information he was receiving from his government sources with Friedman. He says they all knew that some of the information was disinformation. This is important because it was Shandera who received what is commonly believed to be the first leaked Majestic 12 document. It was another presidential briefing on UFOs, but this one was for President Eisenhower. The document was on a roll of 35mm film Shandera received on December 11, 1984. The package was sent from Albuquerque, New Mexico, where Doty still worked as an OSI special agent. However, Doty has always denied having anything to do with it. This briefing was shorter but similar in content in that it began with the public's reaction to the Washington UFO sighting. Then it went on to explain the Roswell crash. There was an added section explaining that the Roswell crash prompted the creation of Majestic 12 and it listed who the members of the group were. Then it summarized a second UFO crash. Although Shandera received the document in 1984, only Moore and Friedman were allowed to see it. Moore says the group wanted to investigate the document further before releasing any information. During this time, allegedly acting on an anonymous tip, Shandera and Moore claimed to have found a supporting document in the National Archives on July 18, 1985. This document is a July 14, 1954 memo from Robert Cutler, special assistant to President Eisenhower to General Twining regarding a National Security Council MJ-12 Special Studies project. It is a short memo and discusses the date and time of a meeting, although it does not allude to the nature of the meeting. The National Archives has since released a paper outlining 10 points that pose problems for the authenticity of the document. Other than this memo, there is yet to be any verifiable official reference to MJ-12. 
Moore says that Doty was aware Shandera had received the document and that Doty was pressuring the group to release it to the public. But Moore says he and his colleagues insisted on doing more research. Meanwhile, in 1987, two British UFO researchers were offered the MJ-12 Eisenhower briefing, Jenny Randalls and Timothy Good. Randalls declined the offer, but Good accepted. He included the document in his book, Above Top Secret, which was published in 1987. However, before the book's publication, Good took the document to the Observer newspaper. They printed a story on the document on May 31, 1987. This was the first time this information had made it to the public and it was a hit. Good has never revealed who his source for the document was, but he says it was not Doty, although he feels Doty had something to do with its creation. Good says information provided by Doty should be taken with a grain of salt and believes the document is disinformation but that a similar organization probably does exist. I think something like it definitely existed, no question about that. A number of people have come forward, including Dr. Eric Walker, a physicist, um, in conversation, a recorded conversation with American researcher William Steinman. He said, yes, there was such an organization, but as to whether it was called Majestic or Majestic 12, I don't know. What I do know is that I was the first to publish the MJ-12 documents. I do not think they are the originals. I think they're based on perhaps some information, but um, I'm not happy with, with the authenticity of them. Now that the document was out and Moore and company were scooped, they felt pressure to share their story. They held a press conference in June of 1987 sharing their story and the documents they had received and the memo they discovered at the National Archives. Good was not alone. Many suspected that Doty created the Majestic 12 documents, especially because of their similarity to the Aquarius document and the Carter briefing he had shown Linda Moulton Howe. However, he has always denied this. He wrote in an issue of the Saucer Schmear newsletter, I was not involved in any conspiracy with Moore to create any documents. If Moore was the original author of the MJ-12 documents, he did it without my assistance or my knowledge. Doty also said the FBI investigated him and he passed several lie detector tests, proving he did not create them. He wrote, I went through two government investigations regarding the MJ-12 documents. I was accused of creating them. Both investigations cleared me of any involvement with these documents. The FBI did investigate the MJ-12 documents and their report can be found online. However, the report does not mention Doty. It consists of the FBI asking the U.S. Air Force if the documents were real and the Air Force replying by writing the word bogus over the top of the document. As Doty noted, Moore was another suspect for hoaxing the documents. Suspicions increased when it was revealed that he had visited Bob Pratt, a writer for the National Enquirer and editor of the MUFON Journal in January of 1982 and proposed they write a non-fiction book about MJ-12 and Project Aquarius. The project fizzled mainly because Pratt wanted the book to be written as fiction as he could not confirm much of the information Moore was giving him. Another red flag for researchers comes from his research partner, Stanton Friedman. Friedman says he was skeptical of the MJ-12 documents at first, but that after some research of the alleged members, he began to believe the group actually existed. He wrote a book called Top Secret Magic, published in 1997 on his research. In it, Friedman repeats a controversial statement he made. He said, the simple fact of the matter is that Moore, Shandera, and I had already picked up on all the names on the list prior to the receipt of the film, except for Dr. Donald Menzel, as a result of the many days spent in archival research begun a decade ago. I asked Friedman about this comment and how they compiled the list. We did our homework. We looked at who was where when with regard to Truman's office in 47. Uh, 
and there were certain obvious names. If you look at who was meeting with who and all that sort of stuff, it was all there. Some feel it is awfully coincidental that the list Moore and his associates had worked out found itself replicated in the MJ-12 document. The origins of the MJ-12 document certainly cast doubt on their authenticity. The first mention of MJ-12 came in the Aquarius document that Doty says he gave to Benowitz as disinformation. I was able to receive a copy of Doty's service records from the National Archives. Doty had become a special agent for Air Force OSI in February of 1980. It was a year later that Moore was given the Aquarius document with MJ-12's name in it. Why would a brand new agent be able to handle and disseminate information about the most secretive organization the United States has ever created? I asked Stanton Friedman this question. Good question, and I don't have an answer for you. You never know who's arranging disinformation to get people off on wrong trails. <clears throat> And my feeling is that the people who released that original roll of film, I mean, they're the guys who would be in trouble. That's against the law to give classified information to people who don't have a clearance or a need to know. So those are the guys who got to be worried, you know, what's going to happen to them. And he may have been doing what he was told to do, put out red herrings, for want of a better phrase. Well, if you clutter the world with all kinds of stuff. You hope you diffuse the genuine stuff. Oh, well that's phony, so this must be phony too. As I say, I've shown that a number of the MJ-12 documents are phony. And I can prove it. The fact that a whole bunch are phony doesn't mean none are genuine. This is the kind of false reasoning you see throughout ufology. Uh, absence of evidence is evidence for absence, you know. Uh, if, you, if I can't provide them something they would like, uh, that means it doesn't exist. This story raises a number of questions, and although there was an FBI inquiry into the authenticity of the MJ-12 Eisenhower memo, the U.S. Air Force has not commented on this story. Was Doty under orders to disseminate disinformation as he claims? If not, that means Doty was undertaking all of these activities while he was a special agent, unbeknownst to his superiors. He did not leave the Air Force until 1988. He was honorably discharged from Kirtland as a master sergeant, although he says he was removed from the OSI for unrelated reasons late in his military career. The fallout of Doty's activities, besides creating a huge urban legend, went to another level when Benowitz was checked into a mental health facility in 1988. He'd become so paranoid about an inevitable alien invasion that he was obsessed with the idea. When he came out of the hospital, he no longer participated in UFO research. Benowitz passed away in June of 2003. I worked with Air Force OSI's Public Affairs Department to research this story. I was told that once my requests for the records were received, I would be put in contact with someone in the Air Force who can make an official statement about the whole affair. However, once I received the documents, I was told they had nothing further to say. I sent a letter emphasizing why it's important that they comment on this story, but the response has always been that they have given me everything they have on the matter. I will post this letter which details other hoax documents Doty has been linked to and all of my sources for this story at openminds.tv. We will also continue to pursue a response from the Air Force and you can help by emailing and calling them yourselves. This story has nearly been lost to obscurity, but any discussion about the authenticity of the Majestic 12 documents must include their true origins. For Open Minds, I'm Alejandro Rojas. <laughs>